She's the popular wellness influencer best known for her brand HB Fit, but now Hannah Bronfman is using her platform to shine a light on the black maternal health crisis. Having suffered two miscarriages of her own, Hannah joins us to discuss her pregnancy journey and how it's inspired her to raise awareness for other women of color. This is Advocate Now. Thank you so much for being here. And you have been so open about your fertility journey, including the miscarriage that you suffered. Why was that something that you wanted to share? Yeah. Um, so I have had two miscarriages now. And um, the first one, just back in 2019, it felt very different from the place that we are currently in our climate of um, reproductive rights and talking about, um, you know, fertility journeys and everything. I feel like we're now starting to really have these important conversations. Um, but in 2019, it felt like a very different, scary, isolating time. And I knew that every day that I went into, um, you know, my fertility specialist's office, and I saw so many different women from all different walks of life in the waiting room, that women were going through similar journeys as mine. And I just felt like I, you know, spent my, you know, better part of my adult career cultivating this community online, sharing so much with them about um, just everything having to do with the health and wellness. And this just felt like a very um, obvious thing to share in that if I, you know, if I can share my story and hopefully give light to a situation that I know a lot of women are going through, um, it helps us feel less alone. It helps break stigmas. As you're saying, it's so important to normalize the conversation around miscarriages because one in four pregnancies result in miscarriage. And was that something that you came to learn as you were going through this process? And you're saying people started approaching you and telling you about their story as well? Yeah, absolutely. I learned more about that, th those statistics as I was going through it. Um, and I wish, pardon me, and I wish that was something I had known going into it. Yeah. Um, I could have prepared myself a little bit more and- and yeah, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't make it any less easy, but it certainly helps us feel like it's, we're not um, outside of the realm of normal. You know, I feel like it's our generation, I feel like in a lot of ways was kind of lied to by our parents and our grandparents. You know, we, we, we hadn't seen that side of the struggle or we're, we're, you know, social uh, and media and everything growing up, it's like, you know, everything is about not getting pregnant and how easy it is to get pregnant. Um, and so that's really just, it's the opposite of, of at least my reality. Right. And another aspect that we haven't really been told about prior was IVF. And I love how candid that you've been about the realities of that, because it is such an intense process on the body. Was there anything that you wish you knew before going into it that you know now? I wish I had known that um, there were like at more support groups for IVF. I think that there's, you know, this, this community that goes through IVF previously to 2023, I think really lived online um, in these, you know, group chats, I, I, not necessarily like Discord because Discord wasn't out, but like Facebook groups and things like that. Um, but so I wish that I had known that there were more support groups. I felt like at first when I had um, decided that we were going to be going through IVF, um, I just felt really isolated. I didn't really know anyone else, certainly in, in my friend group that was going through this. Um, so I didn't really know where to turn besides like the community that the clinic had, you know, already put together. Um, but there's so many support groups out there that, um, are amazing and an amazing resource for women's mental health um, because it's a real emotional journey as well as a physical one. Yeah. And you talk about how taxing the process can be, but on the flip side, you know, there's the process of taking matters into your own hands to create the family you desire. And that's so inspiring to watch. Has that restored a sense of empowerment in you? Would you say? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, any, listen, any, um, 
task that is moving our goal forward is definitely a part of the empowering and taking control back into my life that has felt so good. And of course, like the outcome, obviously, with having our son and, um, you know, now on the way to having our daughter, um, you know, it's all that that part is like, so, so rewarding. And, you know, at the end of the day, while taking control and and feeling like you're finally taking the steps that you need forward to, to get on your path. You're also constantly reminded on this path that you are completely out of control and that there are going to be things outside of your control that you just cannot get a grip on. And that actually is a really great metaphor for, I think, what parenthood is like. You know, at the end of the day, you know, you have these goals, you you think you're going to parent one way or whatever. It's just like, there are things that ha- arise that are outside of your control that you just need to roll with the punches on. And that's also what it's like to be on the IVF journey. You, you've also been raising awareness around the Black maternal health crisis in the U.S. Tell me about that. Black women across the country are three times more likely to die during a child. Uh, during childbirth due to birth complications in hospitals. Um, In fact, that number is 12 times more likely in New York State, where I live. Um, And I think that that has, there are a lot of reasons why that is. And for for many reasons we don't need to go into right now, we need solutions, right? We we are, Black women are at the core um, of, of this, you know, epidemic in the U.S., our healthcare system is failing us. Um, and, you know, for lack of education and advocacy and other things, like we, for whatever reason, are the ones that are getting cast aside. You have this incredible platform with all of these followers. And what type of example do you hope to be setting with this pregnancy? And, and how do you hope that the experience of childbirth might be more positive for other women in the future? Yeah, I mean, so I ended up using this time around a practice that is rooted in midwifery as well as obstetrics. Sorry, pardon me. So they are, it's a collaborative care practice and they are covered by insurance. So for me, it was really important to tell that story because not a lot of people know that midwifery um, can be covered by insurance or even about this specific practice that I'm working with. I mean, they're a younger company and they only have a couple of clinics in New York state, which we really need it here in New York. Um, but, you know, being able to tell my story and reinforce like, you know, education, advocacy, um, resources is really important because for so many people, um, you know, they're just not, it's not there. And we're also conditioned, you know, we're conditioned as humans to give birth in hospitals, yet we're being told right in front of us that the outcomes are even worse, right? But for a lot of people, the other option of like a home birth can also be really scary. So we ultimately, even though we're, we know that we're risking our lives by going into a hospital to give birth, we see, we still think that that's the best option. So, um, you know, if I can bring some awareness to midwifery, um, because midwives are really, listen, I don't, I don't want to make it sound like doctors don't have their patients needs at the forefront of their work, but the statistics literally show that. So, you know, midwives are there to really care for their patients and, um, you know, they are part of the solution. So I I'm using my platform to showcase that I'm using midwives in this, uh, pregnancy And, you know, I can only hope and pray and visualize and manifest a smooth delivery in a hospital in New York state where things are dicey. Yeah. Well, Hannah, thank you so much for the positive example that you're setting for women. We wish you all the best on the rest of your pregnancy and your growing family. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Thank you, Sonia. I really appreciate it. I'm Sonia Bank Daddy. Thanks for watching and advocating. For more stories and content like this, visit advocate.com and advocatechannel.com.